car sick. I'm car sick. Open a window. I'm car sick. Take a pill. I'm car sick. Rest your eyes. I'm car sick. Shh. Be still. I'm car sick. Drink some ginger ale. I'm car sick. Can you try to wait? I'm car sick. Now we're almost there. I feel better. Darn. Too late. <clears throat> I'm talking about a car and using my first poem in this poetry lesson to demonstrate that when you drive and learn to drive, you are using prose. There's paragraphs, there's rules, there's sentences. You go down the streets, you go straight. When you get on a roller coaster, that's poetry. There's emotions, there's ups, there's down, there's turns. Your stomach goes to the top of your mouth. You use stanzas, you use lines, You're not in a book. Although you could write a whole book book using poem. The great William Shakespeare did that. But poetry is a feeling and you have to use your words particularly well. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, I like that poem, Car Sick. It uh, gives a lot of good examples of the things we're going to go over today. We're going to start first with the definitions that we're going to use in all three lessons that I use this week. Line breaks, how the author makes the length of his lines, how he separates them, and how he creates pauses. So if you were seeing car sick, I'm car sick, I am car sick, open a window. Okay, and he has a white, he has a line break that's similar each time. So you're supposed to take your time, as you can see. Some people will say I read it well, some people say I could have done it a little better. Uh, but I tried to use the line breaks. White space, okay, if you notice in poetry, in between the lines, in between the stanzas, there's a lot more white space than in regular prose with uh, paragraphs, etc. The white space is the space in between the stanzas. Again, it's a poetry's paragraph, which is a stanza, and the white creates longer pauses. Imagery is the name given to the elements in a poem that spark off the senses. Image, a synonym for picture in it, but sight, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting all apply. When you write poetry, think about the sight, think about the hearing, think about the spelling, smelling, think about the touching, think about the tasting. Okay. I'm, I'm car sick. That brings up smells, thoughts, tastes. Open a window. You want fresh air. You want. So he's thinking about all of those imagery. Repetition, the repeating of words, phrases, lines, or whole stanzas. <clears throat> and on car six, he, re he repeats the line. I'm car sick. I'm car sick. I'm car sick. And then. He's funny at the end, I feel better. Um, it can be like that, one line. It can be whole stanzas that are repeated. It emphasizes a feeling. The feeling in that is I'm car sick. Alliteration is the repetition of the same consonant sounds at the beginning of the words near each other. Okay. Hassonance is the repetition of the vowel. So a consonant is like thump, well, th, so <laughs> thick, thump, thought, thick, thump, thought, okay? That's consonants. Vowel, um, up, uh, uni, the vowel sounds, okay? Onomatopoeia means a word resembles the meaning it, the sound represents. Buzz, 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 clank, 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 clank. 
clang, 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 clang. So rhyme requires two or more words that repeats the same sounds. They are often spelled in a similar way, but they don't have to be. And they are spelled, they don't have to be spelled in a similar way. Rhymes can be at the end, and that's called end rhyme. It can be in the middle, and it's called eternal. They did use one end line, pill and still. Take this pill, Shh, be still, end rhyme. Okay, so throughout the three lessons, we're going to be using all these. Hopefully, you use it when you start to write your own poem. All right, so the two things that we're going to look at to begin are the line breaks and the white space. So if you look at a poem, here's a poem, here's the line breaks, here's white space, here's the line breaks, another white space. All right, for you, I did this in black and white. First of all, I hope you noticed in poetry, I went and bought this at Staples. You don't use because it's a feeling. That's what poetry is. It's going to elicit happiness, sadness, morose. It's going to elicit. So I got poster paper that have clouds on it. They have clouds. All right. So now, in this, you're going to go line breaks. And then I did, I did it the opposite. I did the white words so you can see the black space. This would be white space on regular paper, okay? So uh, you, Welcome to the Night by Joyce Sidman. To all of you who crawl and creep, who buzz and chirp and hoot and peep, who wake at dusk and throw off sleep, welcome to the night. To you who make the forest sing, who dip and dodge on silent wing, who flutter, Hoover, clasp, and cling. Welcome to the night. Come feel the cool and shadowed breeze. Come smell your way among the trees. Come touch rough bark and leathered leaves. Welcome to the night. The night's a sea of dappled dark. The night's a feast of sound and spark. The night's wild, enchanted park. Welcome to the night. So in between, you're going slowly. And then when you get to the white space, which here is the black space, you pause. You let this sink in. And then you say the next. So white space separates different parts of the poem. Here are your paragraphs, which in poetry are called stanzas. These stanzas all represent. They should be together and meaning something. To all of you who crawl and creep, who buzz and chirp and hoot and peep, who wake at dusk and throw off sleep, welcome to the night. So in the first paragraph, he's going to talk about who belongs in the um, night. And then the next, he's going to say, who makes it sing. To you who make the forest sing, who dip and doggle on and dodge on let me start that over. To you who make the forest sing, who dip and dodge on silent wing, who flutter, who hoover, clasp and cling, welcome to the night. So it's a different set of animals. These ones chirp and hoot and peep, these dodge and dip and silent wing. But both of them now, both of them in third barrier, come feel the cool and shadowed breeze. Come smell your way among the trees. Come touch rough bark and leathered leaves. Welcome to the night. So first he talked about the characters in the first two paragraphs, just like you do in some writing. And now he's talking about where you're going. And then finally, the night's a sea of dappled dark. The night's a feast of sound and spark. The night's a wild enchanted park. Welcome to the night. It's almost a conclusion of what all these three were about. Beautifully written by the great Joyce Sidman. Does anybody have any questions? If you've got questions, I'm going to ask. Okay, so I think that you understand line breaks. I think you understand white space. 
And that's what you put in when you write your poetry. That's what you will notice when you read your poetry. All right, so now we're going to go right to imagery. And imagery is, I think, one of the most important elements of poetry. And I'm going to read you three poems. And in those poems, um, you're going to listen carefully. And you're going to use and notice the imagery. All right? So imagery. So we did line breaks. We did white space. Now we're doing imagery. Imagery is the name given to the elements in a poem that sparks off the senses. Image is the synonym for picture because that part of the word is in it, but it also means sight, hearing, smelling, touching, tasting. They all apply. All right. So I'm going to read you three poems, and then we're going to see what senses the author decides to use. We did welcome to the night. To all of you who call and crawl and creep, who buzz and chirp and hoot and peep, who wake at dusk and throw off sleep, welcome to the night. To you who make the forest sing, who dip and dodge and on silent wing, who flutter, hover, clasp and cling, welcome to the night. Come feel the cool and shadowed breeze, come smell your way among the trees. Come touch rough bark and leathered leaves. Welcome to the night. The night's a sea of dappled dark. The night's a feast of sound and spark. The night's a wild enchanted park. Welcome to the night. All right, so first you go over your imagery and what the poet did to create imagery. The sights, owl flexes, it, owl flexes its head. The sounds, insects and animals in the night. The touch, bark leaves. Down here, like I said, where they're going. Up here was the sounds, the insects, the owls. Okay? And then, how did he do it? He used sound words. Buzz and chirp and hoot and peep. He used describing words. Rough and leather to do touch. Sound words to do sound. All right? Now I'm going to read... The poem Snail at Moonrise. And it's by the same author. It's by Joyce Sidney. Each night, Snail unhooks himself from earth, climbs a slick trail of silver up, up the horizon, the horizon, sorry, of log, up stems of leaves, up their dewy tips, seeking with its tiny sandpaper tongue morsels of green to mix in his dark, moist body and spin into whirls of light. Shell maker, moon maker, gleaming silver bright, each night darkness into light. Okay, now just to talk about the two, this is again by the same poet, but in this, she wants to keep, because it's about a snail, she almost wants it, it slimmer than this poem. And the, the line breaks are more prevalent than even the, or the, they're similar to the, really the stanza breaks or the white space. So she has white space all the way through, even with the length of her sentences, which are lines, not sentences. Okay. Um, but let's stick with imagery. The imagery is Sights, a shiny trail, a long log. Describe the trail as slick and silver. Touch, rough tongue. Compared log to the horizon. Compared the snail's tongue to sandpaper. So the imagery is the sights, a shiny trail, a long log, the touch, the rough tongue, and then what the poet did to make those and to create imagery, all right? The last one being used by the same poet is Snowflake Wake. 
Again, you can quickly look at it now. A couple things she did here. There's a line of, there's a stanza of three and there's a stanza of five. Okay, a lot of white space. Okay, and then the lines are short and long, longer, and they're not long, long. All right, snowflakes wakes. Snowflake wakes, whirling, arms outstretched, lace sprouting from fingertips, leaps, laughing in dizzy cloud, a pinwheel gathering glitter, drops into air, suddenly soft and full, a lattice of stars spinning silently, drifts down, touching and tickling, clinging and chumping, huge earth sighs and settles, sleeps, tucked in its own blankets. So what did this author do? It's the same author, but what she, did she do in this, in the snowflakes wake? For her sights, for her imagery, she had sights, snowflakes flying through the air. She had sounds, quiet. She had touch, warm, crazy, soft. How did she do it? She compared a snowflake to a pinwheel. She used the word silently. She described the snowflake being tucked into its own blanket. So <clears throat> that author, as I said, was Joyce Sidman. I think she is awesome at using imagery. So right away, we've been over line breaks, white space imagery. Now that doesn't mean she didn't use repetition. She did alliteration, <clears throat> onomatopoeia, rhyme. Um, she used it all. But we will be going over that in future lessons. So now, to end, let's read one last poem. The Road Not Taken by my favorite poet, Robert Ross, an American icon. Two roads divide, let me start it over. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry, I could not travel both. And be one traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same and both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads to way, I doubted if I ever should come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that made all the difference. Boys and girls, if you don't love poetry after that, I don't know what to say. Become a poet.